You might think you know who the most powerful man in all of Dove Valley is, but I know I was blown away by today's news and I think you will be too. At the end of this video, I need you to decide how would you decide if you were the person making the decision. So the news of the day that just dropped was that the general manager position, which is currently occupied by, I guess it's that way, by George Payton, who was hired in 2021, the future of his position and who sits in that seat of GM is going to come down to Sean Payton. Now, this is odd because coach is under the GM. And so this would be like me deciding on my own boss. Like, that's kind of crazy. So we are going to go through and evaluate how has the draft picks, how has free agency worked for George Payton, and then how has it worked for the alternative, and how do you hope Sean Payton decides on this? So again, the news of the day is from Adam Schefter, and Adam Schefter says that Sean Payton indeed is going to be the person who gets to decide on the future of George Payton. And Adam Schefter is a person you can trust in this matter because he used to be a Denver reporter. I remember him reading him in the Denver Post and Rocky Mountain News. He is a very, very plugged in source and uh, he definitely knows. So if he says that it is Sean Payton's choice of whether or not we keep George Payton, you can basically take that one right to the bank. That thing is true. So the question becomes, did George Payton do well enough to keep the job? Is he the kind of person who can build a, a Super Bowl winning team or should we turn to Sean Payton's alternative, which we're going to break down as well? So looking really the best way to evaluate a general manager is to evaluate them based on free agents that they were able to attract and the draft. And truly, because of where we've been with cap recently, uh, the draft is the most pivotal thing that a GM is in charge of. They are the boss of the scouts. They're the ones who collect all the information. Sometimes they are scouting themselves. Uh, and they help funnel that information to the front office to make the draft decisions. So George Payton was hired in January of 2021. And so the first draft that we can evaluate for him was the 2021 draft. He came on came on right after the season there. And so he was right after Elway and did four months of work from January until April. And he made his first draft. Um, so there are some people who say that uh, this was his strongest draft, and we can't give him credit because he did, only worked eight of the months and that a lot of the scouting and a lot of the leadership and go watch this guy, go watch this guy actually fell in the Elway camp. I don't know how I feel about that. I'd love to hear your opinion on that. I think George Payton was doing all this scouting when he was at Minnesota and brought all that knowledge with him and made the decisions. And so I do give him credit for uh, this. And I think this was a phenomenal strongest draft. So let's look at that 2021 draft. And you look at all the players who are bolded are currently on the team. That is a the number one thing you look for when you look at a draft class is like, okay, who still is on the team? Because there are certain ownership groups where they'll keep horrible players that they drafted just because they want to save face. But luckily, the Broncos have not been like that recently. And so you look here, Pat Sertan the second, absolute no-brainer. That was a brilliant pick. The only thing you could argue that maybe would have been a better pick than him would be Justin Fields, yet the jury's still out on there. Like if you, if you look at the first couple years, I would take Pat Sertan's career so far over Justin Fields' career so far. It's just if Justin Fields skyrockets and turns into Lamar Jackson, you would wish that we had Justin Fields instead. But obviously, no brainer there. The other argument you can make is that he should have picked Micah Parsons, the awesome linebacker at the Cowboys. I still think Pat Sertan is a lockdown corner, one of the best corners we've ever had here other than Champ Bailey. Then you look again, Javante Williams, absolute stud running back. He has had a down year, but I think the big thing with Javante is – Watch how he performs next year. ACL injuries, um, while you're back on the field in a year, ACL injuries are really two-year injuries. And if you look at Cortland Sutton last year, everyone was like, why is he not very good with Russell Wilson? And then this year, 10 touchdowns and an incredible explosive plays, that's because really ACL injuries for explosive players like running back and wide receiver, it really is two years. And so don't rule out Javante right now. He's kind of hitting that injury um, slump, but he is still, I think, one of the best running backs in the league. Um, and, and we'll see that going forward. But again, I think that is a great pick. Now you look, Quinn Minard's the belly 
My favorite lineman on this team, absolute stud pick there to get a starting lineman in the third round. And especially, I think he was out of Whitewater, Wisconsin, a no-name guy. He had funny film of him like um, blocking trees and crazy stuff like that. That's a huge pickup there. Great find by George Payton. Baron Browning, we saw our defense flip when he came back. Like that 70 burger that we let Miami drop on us was before Baron Browning came back, and he's a beast. Caden Stearns, there's some hope there. And then look at this, the seventh round pick, Jonathan Cooper. My goodness, I didn't realize he was such a low pick, and uh, we just saw the difference he made, that amazing interception against Herbert, the pressure that he gets. He has like crazy, what is he at, nine sacks for the year? incredible for six round talent. So, so far you give him all thumbs up on his first draft. Like that's an amazing first draft. Very, very impressed. So let's go to the next year. Uh, next year we have a little diminishing return. So the issue with this year, uh, this next year is that this was our first year that we were without Russell Wilson or without a pick for Russell Wilson. And I think the cringiest thing I've ever heard in my life was when media asked George Payton, like, what are you going to do during the first round? And he's like, we're just going to watch highlight films of Russell Wilson. And he did. And then Russell Wilson had a horrible year under Nathaniel Hackett. But here is his pick that year. Uh, Nick Benito, that's a beast pick. Like Benito outperformed there what we thought. He's an incredible uh, speed rusher. And now he's added the the bulk to uh, stop the run as well. And so I, I'm really happy with that pick. And if you look again, all bolds because all of them still are on our our squad in some way or another. Greg Dulcich there at, at three. I th- I think he has all of the potential, but his injury, like your best ability in football, is your availability, and he hasn't been available. And there are a lot of people who saw that coming out and said he, uh, that George Payton and his scouts should have seen that coming too. So I would say that. At three, especially when you compare it to his draft the year before to get um, Browning and Quinn Miners at three to then have Benito at three, you're like, what's happening there? But uh, Mathis has shown flashes, also gotten burned. Um, and then uh, Delarian Turner Yell, interestingly enough, like with all of our safety problems, with locks injuries, with Kareem Jackson suspension, like he hasn't stepped in because of injury. Uh, Montreal, Washington was supposed to be like our future Marvin Mims, like speedster guy. And he hasn't really made it. Um, and so the, and then these other guys, none of us really know him. Wattenberg is a backup lineman and, and maybe, uh, the NFL, you got to add a bunch of weight in order to be an offensive lineman. Maybe he can flash a little bit later on, but overall I would give this draft pick, um, like a C, maybe like a C plus because he didn't have a first round pick and you did get a couple starters. Uh, you got definitely got a couple starters if Dulcich is healthy. Um, let's go to, to last year's draft, uh, the one we probably know and, and talk about the most because it recency bias. But if we look here, a uh, lot of great talent here that we had Marvin Mims who made the Pro Bowl. Now, he made the Pro Bowl as a, a kick returner and we drafted him as a wide receiver. But, but I just think like, man, if he could be like a, a Devin Hester and we, we picked him with the um, second pick, but it was a mid to late round second pick, like that's a, a pretty good score there. Drew Sanders stopped that fake punt on Sunday's game. He's shown flashes. I think that really puts the pressure on, are we going to re-sign um, Josie and, and just keep that going or what do we, I think that puts some pressure on that and shows that we have talent there. Moss still on the team and has shown some flashes as well. JL Skinner. Again, it's interesting that he hasn't uh, flashed up and gotten any time with the starters, especially with how weak we've been at safety. Uh, and then Troutman, a trade with the tight ends that that's a good trade as well, because we know he's played a lot um, this year and had some big first downs for us. So overall, as a drafter, knowing that he's only had one first round draft pick and it was, um, he picked our, our PS2, our beloved Pat Sertan, I think I would say as a drafter, I'm very, very happy with him as a draft evaluator. If you look at like John Elway, John Elway's real weakness was the draft. His real strength was free agency. Like he got Peyton Manning to sign here, DeMarcus Ware to sign here, Keep Tlaib to sign here. Yet he then drafted some dudes that you're like, what? You picked him there? And so I think if you were to say uh, really George Peyton's major skill 
it is drafting. And I think if you look, especially with the cap hits that we're going to have going forward, we're not going to be able to afford a lot of free agents. And so truly having someone who can master the draft is incredibly important. And so I think um, that if I were to give him a grade, I would say that it's a it's a A minus B plus drafter. Uh, and I'll be very interested to see what he does with our first round pick this year. Are we going to move up and get a quarterback or what are we going to do? Now, the big, big red mark on George Payton's tenure is truly the trade that he made for Russell Wilson and trading away a bunch of first round draft picks, a bunch of second round draft picks. And then the fact that he traded away Noah Fant, who was a first round draft pick, really it was like giving three firsts and three seconds because that's what Drew Locke was. For Russell Wilson and a fourth round pick uh, who ended up being the guy who who was suspended for gambling. So I think that's a huge red mark. The other huge red mark on his name is the massive contract extension he gave to Russell Wilson, which is going to create $85 million of dead cap next year if he's not on the team. And if he is on the team, then it's, you know, you can't really put any talent around him. You're counting on him to be the elevator. So um, all of that to say, I... He, I think there are mixed reviews on George Payton. Now, as I've heard someone famously said, don't compare me to the almighty, compare me to the alternative. So if it is not George Payton, all rumors show that the the next GM for the Denver Broncos would be one of Sean Payton's best friends of all time, the GM and vice president of the New Orleans Saints, Mickey Loomis. Now, if I were to say right now, would I rather have Mickey Loomis or George Payton Hands down, I want George Payton. Mickey Loomis, very good with free agency, but I just think he's more of an old school guy. He he is elite in that he brought a Super Bowl to New Orleans. He gets Sean Payton's system probably better than everyone, and they're very, very good friends. Um, you heard Sean Payton say in an interview that uh, it's rare to have one of your closest friends be someone you've worked with f- for 16 years like that. But I also wonder how unchecked power goes and how it actually could be a good thing for Sean Payton to have a check. And if George Payton can stand up to him, um, if you look at how Loomis has done, he has, uh, of he's drafted 128 players, 46 of them had, have made pro bowls. Um, and that's a pretty good number. And 24 of them have become all pros. So that also is a pretty good number. Now, one of the interesting stats that has come out recently, uh, are just He did very well in getting New Orleans up to the hump, but then it seems like he's kind of fallen off of a cliff. Uh, And so since 2011, again, we get New Orleans got to the hump when the Super Bowl fell off a cliff. No team has given up more uh, draft day capital and lost more points because of failed trades than New Orleans Saints under Mickey Loomis. So this is not what you want to see in a graph. This is um, how many points that you get for trading away. Um, different players and stuff like that. And so this is just not where you want to be on that chart. So I guess the question I have for all of you in the comments is if you were Sean Payton, you got to pull the trigger on this. Do you want your best friend, Mickey Loomis, or should we keep rolling with George Payton? Give him one more year, uh, knowing now that our backs are against the wall and we need a great draft class more than ever. Uh, Either way, buckle up Broncos country because it is going to be a busy, busy off season.